service this morning, memorial. A lot of us at this time of year uh, are celebrating the, the birth of Christ, which is very important because without him, without his birth, there would be no death of Christ. So that we reflect on his, on his death as, as uh, we sing in the song that God sent his one and only son to come and live on the earth to show us how to live our lives for him and, and uh, to this he was sacrificed and, and uh, spat upon and cursed and uh, all that we might have a chance to live in heaven if, uh, if we do as we're told as we study. Uh, the 
this time let's protect the bread. It represents Christ's body. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, all the many blessings you give us. Thank you for this time we have to surround this table, protect this bread. This represents your Christ's uh, body we nailed to the cross uh, for our sins. Be with those that partake of this this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. pray once again. Father in heaven, we come to you again. We take these emblems. We take this fruit of the vine. It represents the blood. Christ shed on the cross for us. His nails are driven through his hands and feet. The crown of thorns is placed upon his head. His blood was, was shed for us. May we wash away our sins and, and uh, have a chance of uh, living in heaven with you. Bless again those who take care of the crush and pray. Amen. <laughs>
concludes the Lord's Supper. Uh, it's a convenient time. To, this time we'll take up a collection uh, for the church. We're commanded to do. Uh, we give from the heart and uh, help support the work of the church around the community and around the world. I ask Chad to move this time, please. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now thanking you for another Lord's Day that you bless us with and the opportunity that we, we have to come and worship you. And now as we come to this time in our service that we prepare to give back a portion that you have so richly bestowed us with, that we will do that with a, a cheerful and a giving heart. And we, we pray that now that you, we thank you for the jobs that you've given us, that we might provide for our, ourselves and our family. And we pray that the funds that are collected here today might, might be used in a way that is pleasing to thee, that we might go out and spread thy word all across the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to number 794. Number 794. This may not be the time to do this, but I'm going to put a plug in here for uh, uh, whatever reason as I was sitting up here this morning. Uh, sitting amongst a, a bunch of just really fine gentlemen. And if, uh, if you haven't ever tried to help serve in the service, and you're interested in doing so,
Most heavenly Father, let's give thanks for this enough beautiful Lord's day and this opportunity we have to come out here to stay with the only living, the truly living God. Lord, and let us not ever forget only through you that we can so bountifully reap our physical and spiritual blessings through you, the only truly living God. Lord, let's pray for the ones that are mentioned in the sick list this morning. Lord, pray that be something physically wrong with them, Lord. Let the doctors and nurses minister to them. Bring them back to their appointed places in life. It be according to our will. Lord, especially pray for those that are spiritually sick this morning, Lord. Pray that we can say or do something that, and, and turn them back to thee before it's eternally too late. Lord, let's pray for this world today, Lord, we live in. Pray that uh, that humanity can turn back to you and get their mind off of all the things that are going on that is not important in, in this world. You know, there's so much strife and things in this world today. But we need to get back to thee and, and start studying thy word and doing thy will. And things like that will level out. Lord, so many times people get concerned with making a living and forget about thee. Lord, help us to get our lives right and, and, and oriented back to thee, Lord. Lord, be with our elders today in this congregation, Lord. Pray and give them the wisdom and the forethought to, to guide this congregation and help spread thy word throughout this community, Lord. Lord, we thank for all the Christians here today, Lord, that we, we, we assemble here in our name. Study our word. Lord, be with each of us as people go into in this holiday period, Lord. Keep us safe. In Jesus Christ's name we pray.
James chapter 1, verse 27. James chapter 1, verse 27. Religion that God our Father accepts us as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Good morning. Good morning. Let me turn myself on here. <laughs> there we go. Hey, how are you doing? We got a great number in attendance with this morning. If you wonder what I carried up here, this is uh, bags of goodies for the kids after we're finished. So I'll meet you at the back door. Miss Gloria has put these together for you. So if all the little kids can meet me at the back door after the lesson, and uh, we'll pass those out to you. So that's what that's about. We got a great number in attendance with us this morning. We're so happy that you're here with us. Uh, if you're visiting with family for the holidays, we're happy that you made it in safely. And we are all looking forward to that big day, right? Everybody is. I know the kids are. I mean, the adults too, right? Now, this is the time of the year. You know, there's been dropping the hints of what they want for Christmas. There's probably been some shaking of the, the packages, uh, the hiding of the gifts. You know, I watched, uh, we watched Christmas Vacation last night, the edited version. Let you know about that. And the funny, one of the funny parts where Clark goes up into the attic to hide the Christmas gifts, and he puts the one in the little crack, and he pulls out one that he's had there for several years. No, you know, have you ever had that experience, you know, where you hide one, you forget where you hid it? But anyway, you know, we're all looking for just that, uh, that perfect Christmas gift. Um, you know, that, that's the big thing. You know, I thought Ryan was going to preach the lesson Wednesday night if you were here. He had the invitation, and I thought he was going to preach what I was going to be talking about this morning, but he stopped short of that. That's unusual for Ryan to shop, stop short of anything. <laughs> but I don't know if he's on, we're on tape, so we probably he may be watching this later. So anyway, I forget about that. And we forget about that we record this on the Mebo, and then we post it out to Facebook and also on YouTube. So I forget sometimes that we're, that we're doing that thing. But uh, anyway, so... You know, they say the best thing to do whenever you're a little nervous is to break the ice with a, with a, a, a joke or two. And I know that we're here for, to be serious, but I overheard a couple of kids talking the other day uh, about, you know, Christmas and things like that. And the one little boy asked his, the little sister asked the little boy, she said, what are, what are you giving to mom and dad before Christmas? He thought for a minute and he said, well, list of everything I want. <laughs> so... I think you're not supposed to laugh at your own jokes, but I can't help that. <laughs> now, some of you who are Star Wars fans, this, you know, if you're not a Star Wars fan, you, you, may not, you may not quite get this one here. So, I, I mean, I know my grandson, Luke, and I know Ryan is a Star Wars fan, and many, many probably are. But uh, Darth Vader and, and uh, his, his son, Luke, were having a conversation about Christmas. <sighs> Luke, I know what you're getting for Christmas. How do you know that? Because I feel your presence. <laughs> Yes, the ice is not as thick as I thought it was. <laughs> but seriously, no, you know, we all, the, the big day arrives, and there's anticipation for this, and we've all been looking forward to this. And, and the big day arrives, and there's different reactions, you know, as, as you open packages. There's surprise, there's joy, uh, there's excitement. And then, you know, let's face it, folks, we've all gotten some gifts sometimes that were a little not so excited about, you know, maybe a little disappointed. I'll, I'll share something with you real quick, you know. Uh, Debbie and I have been married for over 45 years now. Well, I gave her her engagement ring uh, at Christmas, as we, on Christmas, as we were opening gifts. And she, I wrapped it in a, a box, obviously, 
but I disguised another box and I gave her that and she was opening this box and she was excited because she, she anticipated it being you know an engagement ring. And she got to the box and she opened it up and she looked and it was there was nothing there. And her face kind of went like, you know, blank, you know. And then I handed her the other box and she opened that up. And boy, her face just went blank. <laughs> and I, I, I could tell there was something wrong. And I went and I said, Deb, I said, what's, you know, that's the engagement ring. You know, this is what we've been planning. This is, this should be you being excited. And, and she said, well, she said, I didn't know you were giving me the, the Hope Diamond. And I said, the Hope Diamond? Yeah, she said, this thing's so small, I hope it came with a magnifying glass so they'll better see it. <laughs> All right, you, you know, you may have expected to come today to hear, as we sang the song, Jeremy, you did a great job on that, by the way, too. And for the first time you said that was, that was really, it was a beautiful song. You may have come in and expect to hear the story of the birth of Christ, the, the angels coming in and uh, singing the chorus. <clears throat> Peace on earth, good toward, goodwill toward men. Uh, you may have been expecting a, a lesson on the star and how it led the wise men to the city of Bethlehem. Uh, I hope you're not going to be disappointed uh, this morning as we just talked about. I hope that you will leave this morning not because of me, but because of the message that God has given to us in his word the message of joy the message of happiness the message of excitement and to know that God has given us his perfect gift the perfect gift of his son today we're going to look back at some examples of God's giving and Jesus giving gifts to those that he was associated with while he was here on earth. Gifts that brought joy, gifts that brought happiness, gifts that brought excitement to them that he gave them to. Jesus gave us, gave them the gifts of healing. He gave them the gift of sight. He gave them the gift of life. And we're going to look at some examples of those gifts this morning. We're going to see the reaction that these individuals have when they receive these gifts. We're going to look at how today Jesus gives us gifts, not so much in a physical sense, but more so in a spiritual sense. So if you brought your Bibles with you, which I hope you did this morning, let's, learn, let's turn to Luke chapter 18. Luke 18, and we're going to be looking at verses 35 through 43. Luke 18, 35 through 43. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting at the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked, what's happening? They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led him by the way rebuked him and told him, he said, be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came nearer, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God for all the people saw it. And they also praised God. Here is a man sitting along the side of the road, probably had been there often. That was probably his only way of surviving. He's blind. He couldn't see. And he was sitting along the side of the road and he heard all this commotion. 
What's going on? He's asking. What's going on? Who is it? And they said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. Something in that man's mind made him understand. Maybe he had heard about Jesus through other stories people had told about him. The things that Jesus had been doing. But immediately he cried out to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, which means the Messiah, have mercy on me. You know, and Jesus recognized this. But those in the crowd that were leading him through, leading them through the streets on the way, what did they tell him to do? Be quiet. Shut up. That's not what Jesus said, was it? Jesus didn't ignore the situation, did he? Jesus said, what would you have me to do? And he said, I want to see. I want to be able to see. We don't know how long this man's been blind. He may have been blind from birth. He may have been blind by an accident. But he said, I just want to see. I want to see my, maybe my wife. I want to see my children. I, I want to see maybe my grandchildren. You think about that. We take that for granted that we can see that we have sight. Some of us have sight that maybe is not as great. Some of us may be, as we get older, losing some of our sight. But to be totally blind, I can't imagine what that would be like. Some of us may have experienced that if you've been in a maybe in, in a cave, if you've gone spelunking, and you get into a cave where there's no no light total darkness. You try to feel your way around. You try to imagine how to get out. You've been in a situation like that. You might have just a taste of blindness, but then you go out into the light, or you find the opening, or whatever it is, and then you realize, you know, you can see again. But this man had no sight. And Jesus said, what can I do for you? What gift can I give you? And he said, I just want to see. You know, he was excited about this. Even though the people told him to shut up. You know, he doesn't have time for you. You're just a blind beggar sitting on the side of the road. He's got more important things to do. You don't matter to him. But that's not what Jesus thought. Jesus thought, you know, I can, I can give this man a gift. And he gave him back the gift of sight. He was filled with joy. He was excited about what he had been given. He went on his way rejoicing. We can't even imagine what that would be like. But he was not disappointed. He was joyous. He was happy. He was excited. You can imagine he probably ran and to see his family, to tell his family what had happened. We know we have other examples in the Bible that that's what they did. They were excited about what Jesus had given to them. <clears throat> you know, we can have that same spiritual excitement today. We can have that same experience today. If, if you are blind to the fact that Jesus is the Son of God, that He came to this earth to give us gifts spiritually, and if you're blind to that, today we can open your eyes through God's word. Jesus told Paul this in Acts chapter 26, 17 and 18. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and to turn them from the darkness to light. From the power of Satan to God. So that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. See, that, that gift is still available to us today. The second example I'd like for us to look at is the example that we can find in Mark chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. Mark chapter 7, 31 through 37. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went down to Sidon. 
down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There some people brought a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged him to place his hands on the man. And after he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers in his ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh, he said to him, Erathava, which means be opened. And at this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. The people were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well. He makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. I don't know what this situation was with the man. It said he could hardly talk. Maybe he had a problem with the way he pronouncing words. He may have had a problem with stuttering. Jesus, can you make me hear? Jesus, can you make me speak without stuttering? I don't know. We don't know what the situation was. But the thing is that the man's family or friends brought him to hear Jesus, brought him to see Jesus and in hopes that he would be healed. You may be here today because the family members invited you to come to services with you. You may be here today because a friend invited you to come to be with us this morning. But what was interesting is that I thought to myself, Jesus took him off to the side for some reason, away from the other part of the crowd. I, I don't know why that was, to be honest with you. But he took him to the side, and then he did something that was so strange, so unusual. And you know, I have to say, I don't remember reading about this. This was, this was a new, new to me. That he, he took, Jesus took his fingers and he stuck them in the man's ears. Then he, then he spit and touched his tongue. How many of us would allow that to happen to us? How many of us would allow someone to spit and touch your tongue? This, what this shows me is that this man was so wanting to be healed that he was willing to allow anything to happen. He was willing to give up and to allow any thing to happen to him. Would you let someone do that? I guess if you were motivated, the fact that you had enough faith that you know what Jesus was going to do was going to make you able to see, or make you able to, to uh, speak and to hear, yeah, I would say we probably all would, would do that. And you know, what was the response? Was there disappointment? No. There was excitement. It says here that they were overwhelmed with amazement at their friend being given the gift of hearing and speech. And Jesus said, you know, don't, don't tell anybody. Don't you tell anybody. What did they do? They ran out. And they couldn't help from telling. Is that, as Christians, is that the way we respond to when we've been given the gift of hearing the word of God, being able to speak the word of God, do I run out and tell people? Do I look for every opportunity? I have to confess, I don't. I should. We all should. But they couldn't help after they saw this. And then the fact is that they said, Jesus does everything well. The Son of God doesn't make anything second-rate. As 
one person said, God doesn't create any junk. He does everything well. You know, you can receive that same spiritual seeing and hearing and healing this morning. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 15, Jesus said, Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I will heal them. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. He says that we turn to him through hearing his word. We obey his word, and I will heal them. The next example I'd like to turn to is Luke chapter 13. Luke 13, verses 10 through 13. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, are you? He said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Here is a woman that really speaks well of her. Because first of all, to be, as the scripture says, crippled. I know that's a word sometimes we don't like to use. Physically challenged is a word that we most likely use today. But the Bible says that she was crippled by a spirit for over 18 years. Where was she on the Sabbath day? Where was she at on the day of worship? She was at the synagogue, there to worship. Now, how many of you, and I speak for myself, when we're just a little ill, we just don't feel quite right when it's just a little bit of a challenge to get to services to worship God use that as a reason 18 years she had had this spirit that caused her to be bent over how many of you have ever seen anyone like that where they they're constantly bent over to where they're looking at the ground all the time constantly but that didn't stop her from going to worship God. And Jesus saw her. That's what's interesting. I mean, can you imagine in this, in an audience, in the synagogue, and Jesus is up teaching as he often did, and then he recognizes, he looks back there and he sees a woman that's bent over there. Can't even look him eye to eye. Can't even look at his face. And he says, woman, come here. Can you imagine what she might have even felt like? I don't know. The scripture doesn't say what she felt like. Did she feel embarrassed? Because she knew that she had to walk up to the front because of her situation, the way she would have to walk and lumber her way up there, or maybe probably somebody would guide her there. But he recognized that Jesus is always looking for a way to heal. And he recognized this yeah. woman. He says, woman, come here. And he says to her, you are set free from your infirmity. And immediately after Jesus touched her, she straightened up. Can you imagine what that would be like? To be in that situation for that long and then to be able to straighten up. And when Jesus healed, it wasn't like, I don't imagine her straightening up like I mean, she straightened up. She was made perfect through Jesus' touch. 
And what did she do? She praised God for the gift that Jesus gave to her. And then it's interesting to see what they said. That people were delighted in verse 17. They were overjoyed at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Do you know that we can be set free today? Jesus can set us free just as he set that person, that woman with that infirmity free. John 8 and verse 36. So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. The next example I'd like to look at is in Luke also in chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse 11 and going through verse 17. Luke 7, 11 through 17. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain. And the disciples and a large crowd went along with him. And as he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother. She was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. And he said, don't cry. Then he went up and he touched the coffin. And those carrying it stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. The news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. The situation is here as Jesus is coming into this town, on the outskirts of the town, the city gate, and he sees this large crowd coming and he can hear the wailing and the crying he can see the faces of those that were carrying the coffin. He can see the face of the mother there that was probably standing by the coffin with her hand on it. You can imagine that. Not wanting to let go. And what does he do? He goes up to the woman. And in verse 13, it says that when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. See, Jesus can be touched with our infirmities. He knows what we feel. He knows the sorrow and the pain that we go through on a daily basis. And he saw this woman. And he saw the pain and the agony in her eyes, the grief that she was experiencing at that time. And he went up to her and he said, don't cry. You know, I can imagine maybe Jesus with his infinite ability to see the future could maybe see his mother's eyes in that woman. Because he knew in just a few short time, in a few short days, months, that his mother was going to be experiencing the very same thing. She was going to be looking at her son, hanging on the cross, dying. And he said to her, don't cry. And then also, I think it's interesting, this woman was a widow also. And this was her only son. Can you see the comparison there between the, the death of her son and the death of the son of God? We know that Mary was there at the cross with friends and family. We don't know. Joseph wasn't there. We don't know what happened to Joseph, but then she could have been a widow at that time herself. 
So I'm imagining in my mind that Jesus is seeing this play through his mind and seeing the pain and the agony that she was going through. And he said, don't cry. And then he touched... He touched the coffin. And he didn't even have to touch the young man. All he had to do was to say, Young man, I say to you, get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk. And then it says, Jesus gave him back to his mother. What a wonderful gift. What a wonderful gift. You know, he gave two gifts out that day. He gave the gift of life to the son. And then he gave the gift of the son back to his mom. And then in verse 16, it says, They were filled with awe and they praised God. God yes. has come to help his people. God has come to help his people. Today, we can receive that same gift of life. Spiritually speaking, we can have that same gift of life. In John chapter 10 and verse 28, he said, I gave, <clears throat> I gave them eternal life, that they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Today, we can have that same gift of life. We've been afforded another day of life to be here today. Scripture says that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. You know, we think about all the things we talked about, about the Christmas story and various things like that, and the gifts that we get on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, whatever the time is that you celebrate. We think about all this, we look in the book of Luke, and we could read the story that's told by Luke about how that the wise men were guided by a star to the town of Bethlehem and where Jesus was. You know, we don't have a star today to guide us to where Jesus is. But do you know how Jesus guides us today? Do you know how we're drawn to Jesus today? Not by a star, by a cross. Jesus said in John chapter 12 and verse 32, and I... When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to me. I will draw all people to myself. That's how we are drawn to Jesus today, not by a star, but by a cross. You know, today we looked at the reactions and the gifts that were given to those individuals and the reaction that they had and the blessings that they received and how they were blessed by these gifts. And we, not only the blood, but the, they, they could see the joy and they could have experience the happiness and the excitement. But also he gave peace and hope and comfort as well. God gives us perfect gifts. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like the lasting, like the uh, shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift. You want to find a perfect gift today? The gift of Jesus Christ that God gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gifted us with his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 says that it is by grace you have been saved. And this is not from ourselves. It is the gift of God. This morning we can leave this auditorium. If we're not a child of God, you have been gifted another day of life. We can leave this morning and experience the same excitement, the same happiness, the same joy that they experienced when they received those gifts from Jesus back then, some 2,000 years ago. We can experience the 
the gift of healing. We can experience the gift of sight to be able to understand and to know what God's will is for our life. We have the ability to hear his word. They didn't have that other than the times that he spoke to them. The Bible wasn't written at that time. We have been blessed with the gifts of his word. You might be asking, well, what is it that I need to do to receive those gifts? The gift of eternal life. The gift of the home of heaven. The gift of forgiveness of our sins. To know that when we come out of the watery grave of baptism, that our sins are left there. They're washed away. We start like afresh. A new creature. A new person. Like a newborn baby, when Nicodemus asked Jesus, how can a man be born again? How can he go back into his mother's womb and be born again? He said, unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit. Luke 13, 3 says that unless we repent, we shall all likewise perish. Matthew 10, 32 says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. And in Acts chapter 2, Peter preached that lesson. He said, you've crucified the Son of God. you put the Son of God to death on a cruel cross. And what did they ask? What must we do to be saved? He says, repent, every one of you, and be baptized for remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse 3. You want to give your family a gift this morning if you're not a Christian? The greatest gift that you could give them today is to become one. And it's not easy. There's a lot of change that we all have to go through. There's a lot of growing to take place. But it begins by obedience to God's word. If you're here this morning, why not take that opportunity? Why not start this new year that's coming up here in just a few short weeks? Fresh, new, a new babe, a new person. Why not receive that gift? If Jesus were here this morning, well, actually, Jesus is here this morning. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Jesus is here. We celebrated his death. He celebrated his death with us. We sang praises to his heavenly Father. And, it, and it's not me asking, it's Jesus asking you, why leave this morning if you're not in a right relationship with God? Jesus is our advocate. He is our go-between. He is pleading our case. Once we become a Christian, he stands before God and says, he's mine. She's mine. She made a mistake. He made a mistake. But he's trying to do, she's trying to do the best that she can do, that he can do. God recognizes that. And we make mistakes. Romans 3.23 says we all sin and fall short. Even after we become Christians, we sin. We make mistakes. But John says in chapter 1, if you walk in the light as I am the light, as he is in the light, the blood of his son cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You may be a Christian and you may have made a mistake. But we're not here to condemn or criticize. We're not here to pull the little speck out of your eye where we've got a beam that's sticking out of our eye. We're here to encourage you, to let you know that God loves you. We love you. And don't leave this morning in either condition either never knowing the Son of God or knowing the Son of God and maybe have just messed up. There's been a song selected this morning and I pray that you will give it some consideration of either of those things in your life. And Jeremy stands and leads us in this song. Would you be